It's now time to create our first model. And if you aren't familiar with the concept of models within object-oriented programming, all this means is we're going to create a class that represents our user's table. This means that we can use that model to create a new user. We can update an existing user. We can delete all users if we wanted to. Uh, it basically provides us uh, a gateway into this table and all of the records in it. So we're going to be doing something slightly different here. And we're going to be using auto loading to load in all of our project files within a specific directory, a namespaced directory. And we're going to be creating a namespace for our application, much like we can see here. All this means is that it it provides us a way to, first of all, not conflict with any other files that we have in our project, and also gives us a chance to structure our project in a really nice way so we can find things easily, update things easily, and also reuse code easily as well. So we're going to, inside of our app directory, create a new folder. Now this folder name depends on your project name. It can be your business name, or it can be your own name, or just whatever, like a, a, a normal project name. Now I'm gonna call this directory code course, but you can call it whatever you want, as long as you know the name of this folder, which I assume you will do, then your auto loading will work. But it basically provides you the ability to namespace it under your application name. So inside of here, we're gonna be creating a variety of different folders, which are gonna store things like our mail wrapper to send email, our helpers to hash things, Slim's middleware, which we'll get to a bit later on, and our models as well. Now I'm gonna separate my models into different uh, directory names. So I'm just gonna create a user directory inside of here. So inside of this user directory, I'm gonna create my user model, and I'm gonna call this user.php. Now notice the structure of this. We've got code course, user, user. So that is going to be the namespace when we eventually auto load with Composer. And this sounds more complicated than it is, so don't worry too much. So inside of this user model then, let's first of all just create a very basic class uh, for our user model, and we won't do too much else with it. So class user, that is it. This is going to represent our user's table. So. Now we're going to look at um, why we're going to be using auto loading and essentially why it's going to help us along the way. So inside of say start.php, if we wanted to use this user model, usually what you would have to do is require in, you know, that file, but we don't want to do that. We want to auto load and we're going to use composer to help us with that. And all that will do is it mean that when we come into here and auto load, all of the files within this code course directory, as long as they're namespaced properly, will be automatically available for us to use. So inside of composer.json, we're going to define how we're auto loading in these files. So we're gonna create an auto load property here. And inside of here, we're going to be PSR4 auto loading. And this is just a standard of auto loading for PHP that follows a specific convention. You can read more about this on the PHP fig website. So go ahead and search for that if you want to read more. So the, the, the key for this is going to be the overall vendor namespace, which I know is code course. But in the, in the place of this, you want to put what you called this folder here. And then we need to um, prepend on a, or append on, sorry, a backslash but you'll see that all of uh, everything else has sort of gone red here uh, because we need to escape that backslash. So that's the reason we do two backslashes because we need to escape the first one. For the value of this, we need to define where this vendor namespace starts and that is at code course. So we just say app code course. So again, this and this need to be the name of your directory here. Anything else under that doesn't really matter as long as it's as long as you namespace based on the directory structure. We'll get to that in just a minute. So 
now that we've done that, we actually need to dump our autoload files again because Composer is now not going to recognize this because we haven't uh, cre recreated the autoloader. So if you bring up your terminal within your root directory that you're working in, where we have our composer.json file in and our composer.phar file in, we're going to run composer.phar, much like we did when we installed dependencies, but this time we're going to dump the autoloader and we're going to pass the optimize flag on. So let's hit that and wait for that to finish. It's done already. And now anything within this code course directory will automatically be included. We can just create any files we want in here and they'll automatically be available for us to use. So let's look at just an example of how we might use that within here. So if I was to say user equals new user, now this isn't going to work. Because, well, it, it could work, but we need to namespace this according to our directory structure. So let's go and namespace this under code course user like that. So this is the class name. This is the folder above it. And then this is the vendor namespace here. So now what we can do is we can say new code course user user. So that's how we access this user model that we've created. It doesn't do anything at the moment because we're not using Eloquent on this. Uh, we're not, we, we've just created a, a standard class basically. But that's the overall concept of PSR for autoloading. What we now need to do is actually look at extending Eloquent within our user model so we can actually hook it up to our database. That's what we did earlier when we created uh, our database settings from Eloquent. So all we need to do in here is extend Eloquent, but where's Eloquent coming from? Well, we need to import this. So we're gonna use illuminate database Eloquent model, uh, but we don't wanna call it model, we're gonna call it Eloquent. So there we go. So now this will be hooked up to our database. There's a couple of things that we can do. We can set the table name. We could now start to play around with it if we wanted to. So we could start to create users using this using this model. Uh, we can do whatever we want. We're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna look at that when we actually come to working with our user model. The other thing that we want to do is define what we want to be fillable to essentially prevent against mass assignment, um, which is protected against automatically with Eloquent. So we need to define the fillable fields. This will be when we uh, update user details or whatever we want to do. So in here is just an array of the column names that we want to be able to be written to. So in this case, it's email or updated. It's going to be username, password, the active status of the user's account, the active hash, the remember identifier, and the remember token. And if you do add any more columns to your database and you need them to be updated uh, by grabbing a user and updating them, you want to add them to here or you will get an error. You'll get a mass assignment exception. We've now created our user model. We're not going to use it yet, so we're not going to go into the fun of actually using it. But what we are going to do is add it to Slim's container. And by this, I mean attaching it to the container so we can use it anywhere in our application without having to, uh, you know, create a new instance of it or anything like that. So what we want to do then is down here, we are going to set our um, user model into our container or put our user model into our container. So to do this, we say app container. So this is all part of Slim's functionality. And we use the set method. We choose a name for what we want it to be in the container. Then we have a callback just here and we return a new user. We've already seen how we uh, create a new instance of a user, but I'm gonna say new user and then I'm gonna import the namespace up here. So I'm gonna say use code course user user like that. So now we have this user model inside of our slim container. So what we can do is to access that, we'll do a var dump on app user and that's it. So this name here uh, basically will be this name here. 
So let's check this out in here. And you can see we've now got an object, code course user, user. Uh, we've got um, lots of different things in here that we haven't actually defined in our class. We've got things like, um, we've got relations, uh, you know, all of this stuff that comes from eloquence. That's basically why all that stuff is in here. So we have now, as part of this video, looked at PSR4 autoloading within Composer. We've regenerated our autoloader so we can load in our dependencies or basically any classes in here that follow the namespacing convention. So remember, code course, user, and then the user class. We've extended Eloquent and defined the table that we're using, which we don't really need to do, by the way, because uh, Eloquent will pick this up for us. We've defined the fillable fields and we are ready to go as it is now inside of our application container. So now that that's all set up, we can go ahead and start logging a user in and, and registering them. But we need to learn about routes within our application, which we already saw earlier when we created that example test route. But we're going to also in the next part dive into views and how we can set up our views. And we're going to be setting up our overall template for our website. Although this does look very basic, um, it's open to expansion through the use of templating. So let's jump into the next part and take a look at how we can pull in slim views, twig, and set up some routes. And we'll be creating our home route as part of that.